This lecture was organized by Dr. Arlemi. It's based on the work done by Dr. Bari and Masan Ebadi. The purpose of these slides are to define measures of central tendency and dispersion. We help you select the appropriate measures to use for different data sets. Graphs may be useful, but the information they offer is often inexact. A frequency distribution provides many details, but often we want to condense the distribution further. Two concepts can help, measures of central tendency and measures of variability or scatter. The most frequent value or category in a distribution is called the mode. For example, if we are to calculate the mode for the following set of data, we will notice that 22 occurs the most frequent. The median is the middle value of a set of ordered numbers. 50% of data are above it and 50% below it. The calculation of median depends on whether we have an even or odd numbers of data points. For example, to calculate for an even number of data points shown here, the median is 25. One of the common ways of describing data is to describe the central tendency of the data. We want to answer the question, around what value does the data tend to cluster? Which statistics we use to answer this question depends on the level of the data. With nominal level data, the only appropriate measure of central tendency is the mode, or the most frequent occurring value. The mode may also be used with ordinal level data and sometimes with interval le level data. With ordinal level data, the most common measure of central tendency is the median or the value of the middle case in rank-ordered data. Put another way, the median is the value of the 50th percentile. Note that with highly skewed interval-level data, the median might be more useful than the mean. We will return to that notion later. With interval-level data, the mean is commonly used. This is the arithmetic average arrived at by adding on up all the values and dividing by the number of cases. When mean and median and mode are the same, then the shape of the distribution is symmetric. Here we are showing a normal distribution. In this distribution, we have the situation where mean and median are the same, but there are two modes different from mean and median. When mean and median and mode are different, if mode is greater than median and median is greater than mean, then we have a distribution skewed to the left. Mean, median, and mode are different here. Mean is greater than median and median is greater than mode. This distribution is skewed to the right. In a uniform distribution, like normal distribution, mean, median, and mode or at the same point. Here the mood is to the extreme right and mean is to the right of the median. Reporting only on average without an accompanying measure of variability mis may misrepresent a set of data. Two datasets can have the same average, but very different variability. Range is the difference between the highest and the lowest score. It's easy to calculate, but highly unstable. If we want to calculate the range for the, different, the data displayed here, the highest value is 190 and the lowest value is 110, and the difference of the range is 80. Standard quartile range is half of the difference between the 25% quartile and 75% quartile. It is more stable than range. 
Sample variance is the sum of the squared differences between observations and their mean, divided by n minus 1, number of observations minus 1. Standard deviation is the square root of the variance. The sum of squares is the key to calculation of sample variance and sample standard deviation. Here we see some data. First, we calculate the difference between each observation and the mean. So, for example, 110 is minus the mean is minus 40. Then we square this difference to get 1,600, and we sum the squares and that gives us the sum of squares. The sample variance is divided by the sum of squares by n minus 1, and the standard deviation is the square root of the sample variance. Here are the formulas. Some of the easy ways to calculate these numbers is to, instead of calculating the difference for each data point, we could calculate the square of the data point and subtract from it the sum of the data point squared divided by the number of observations. From there on, the sum of squared can be used easily to calculate the remaining formulas. So now we have calculated standard deviation. What use is it to us? Well, the standard deviation partitions most of the data in normal distribution. It tells us where the data are located. So if you're looking within one standard deviation, it is 34.1 above and 34.1% below would give us the one standard deviation. If we want to look at two standard deviation, we have to add 13.6% more of the data, both above and below, and so on. We can go, move on to three standard deviation. So standard deviation tells us where the, date, the bulk of the data are. Mean and standard deviations are also used to compute standard scores. Then standard scores have a, have a published distribution on the web so we, one can easily calculate the frequency of any observations. For example, if we want to calculate standard score for blood pressure of 140, and if the sample mean is 110 and the standard deviation is 10, we now calculate the standard score to be 3. Now we can use the standard score to read from the web how often does the blood pressure of 140 occur in our distribution. Standard deviation also allows comparisons of observed distribution to expected distribution. On the left we see the observed sample that we have taken. On the right we see the expected distribution in terms of the percentages of the data. The take-home lesson is that measures of central tendency and variability can describe the distribution of the data.